Take as little as three minutes to see if you could save on motorcycle insurance with Progressive. Come on, you've spent more time than that trying to name your bike. Hmm, how about the Crusher? I guess it's not really crushing anything. The Silver Bolt? No. Oh, oh, what about Pepper? Mysterious. Is it a pet or a condiment? Surprise! It's a motorcycle. Uh, no, that's stupid. Get a quote in as little as three minutes at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. You will fail. So what? Everybody does. It's time to redefine success. Meet body. Fun workouts and a week off. Healthy eating and indulgence. Liking yourself no matter what. Yeah, you will fail. We all will. But we're not going to let that be the end. You see that? We're already making progress. So let's keep going. We are body. Start your free trial at body.com. That's B O D I dot com. You are listening to an entertainment program put together by a company called Financial Ineptitude. Anything said on this show is not an endorsement or professional advice. Would you really want to tell a court of law you were suing us because you thought taking financial advice from two idiots on a podcast put out by Financial Ineptitude was a good idea? Really? Clown hat smiley face. Hello and welcome to the China Shop. I'm Shopkeeper Dan, and with me, as always, is Kyle, creator of FinancialIneptitude.com. How are you doing today, Kyle? Uh, please hold the applause. Uh, hold, hold, hold your applause <laughs> to the end, folks. <laughs> How did that get in there? <laughs> <laughs> I feel a lot better now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm working on the traditional medieval revelry of trumpets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> can you play the trumpet too i know you play a lot of instruments <laughs> i can make noises on the trumpet but i would have to actually like practice the fingerings and <laughs> the the lung pressure to to truly learn it but I, I, as a like kid i could play love. hot cross buttons oh really yeah oh all right that's pretty impressive how are you doing today i'm doing all right doing all right uh you know getting ready to uh, go half ass at a nine to five job, the quiet quitting. As uh, it were. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I gotta have that time to trade. I uh, I actually made a joke last night that uh, was very unsettling to to my staff. They they were unsure because I, I I I looked at the offices of all the upper managers. And I was like, I wonder what would happen if somebody just lied their way into a job and then as a boss. And then when people said, hey, what should I do here? And all they ever answered was, what do you think we should do? <laughs> and then they, they all start laughing and then they all look at each other. They're like, wait, that is what he's doing. That's what you've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When they all come to your problem, I'm like, well, what do you think we should do? Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, Most of the time they know what to do. They just need a boss to be like, yeah, that's go ahead. Do it. I mean, yeah, that's a lot of times people just want to know that you're going to have their back, but I don't know that you're putting off the uh, the aura of sticking up for the employees <laughs> right now. <laughs> I feel like uh, Di- DiCaprio uh, as the doctor in that Catch Me If You Can movie. As the do- Oh, which part was that? Where he basically just asks all the other doctors, the, doctor, I've got this, uh, yeah. this, this. And he's like, well, what do you think we should do? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. I think we yep. should do this procedure. He's like, all right, let's do it. I, I hope you didn't ruin the, the movie joke. No. Wait, what? No, the... no. Oh, God. <laughs> I probably should have. I should have done Catch Me Can. Anyway. Uh, I know, right? Come on to the shop with us today, folks. Sit back, relax, hedge against that rage machine. We'd like to welcome any new listeners just joining us. We're here smashing our way through a complete set of fine china, sharing our ever-growing strategies for trying to maximize gains and cutting losses. If you are new to the shop and stock trading in general, you can always check out our knowledge and resource centers on financialineptitude.com, or you can give one of our many beginning trading episodes a listen. We'll have all those links in the episode description for you. Best place to be is go hop on over to the Discord server. Uh, lots of amazing people on there every day. It's a really awesome place to be, and it's a free Discord server. No paid yes. tiers or special access areas. Cue the applause. <laughs> <laughs> and when you do join uh, join our server, send uh, send a private message or email with your mailing address so we can send you some smash it yourself swag straight from the shop. We're really glad you're here. It's a lot of fun. Always better with friends. Always better. Always better. It's a really wonderful time. Just a wonderful time. 
And Kyle, speaking of wonderful times, we got any show news report? I do, but it's not exactly what, uh, the right segue for it. <laughs> Kyle, uh, speaking of sad, dark times, do you have okay. any show news to report? Well, I mean, hmm. Okay. Now that we just prefaced that the wrong way, episode six of Trade Runners is coming out Monday. That's <laughs> that's the good news. <laughs> the bad news is I was supposed to record with Drew Spavetna uh, for next week's episode, and we ended up having to postpone and push him back a month because half his house burned down. Oh, which half? Um, I I, I don't know. Does it matter? <laughs> Like either you can't sleep or you can't eat. <laughs> that's inc- that, that's that's wild. That's wild. Yeah. Sorry to hear about that. Which ha- the inside half? Uh, I'm assuming. <laughs> well, yeah, because it was the outer fifty percent. He 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 might still be good for a while. Yeah, well, it does sound like nobody was hurt though. I mean, that's that's why we can kind of joke a little bit about it. I, that's I wild. Hope he doesn't man. listen to this. <laughs> I don't think we've ever had a guest not not show because their house burned down. No, normally they just they still don't show. show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, so next time somebody doesn't, uh, you know, at least let us know why they can't show up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna point out that hey, fucking Drew's house burned down. He still managed to get the email off to reschedule. <laughs> like, I'm gonna need to see some better commitment right? from you guys. <laughs> oh, and then the uh, the next thing we got is the next roundtable. We've got Eric Mason coming back, uh, joining me and Eric. Uh, we'll be discussing why economists don't trade and then mm. taking any trading questions that people have for an economist to answer. Uh, things like, you know, what what uh, economic news should you actually pay attention to? Or, you know, what does the Fed policy? Hey. Or if, if advertising doesn't have an effect, That's, explain the fashion industry. If you are pro-advertising, then we'd love to hear from you because I know Eric would love to field a lot of those questions. <laughs> If I could well, just hit him with like five of those and just waste. That's my, that's, that's my main question. Fashion, explain it. Right. <laughs> oh God. The, the price of Nike Air Jordans. Yeah. Without yeah. marketing. Explain. Right. Right. <laughs> Actually, that, that, that one does have an explanation as a sec, off, secondhand market. Mm. Supply and demand. Anyway. Folks, right. we got a lingering, lily-livered, a limber show for you today. Lots of market-moving news, plenty of stocks on the radar, and more options than banks going belly up. <laughs> What's the count now? Three? <laughs> Three, Jim. Count them. Three. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, not looking good, is it? We'll talk, <laughs> we'll talk more about that later, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Reach out to us. We do love your messages and comments on Twitter and Facebook over on our Discord server, especially. Got the link in the episode description for you. If you're old school, you can just send us an email to the number two bulls at financialineptitude.com. That's the number two bulls at financialineptitude.com. Maybe you got a hot stock tip. Maybe you want to tell us about a great trade you just made. Or maybe rogue scientists have fused your body with a classic muscle car and now you have to fight and cause crimes from behind the wheel whether it be in the jungle on the cliffs maybe even outer space hmm this is either this either sounds like herbie or some one of those transformer movies i never watched i may i may be i i, I haven't seen any of these films so i may be oh you're just wrong. making it up <laughs> this is what i think there, the movie is about nine of them. <laughs> Oh, Fast and the Furious? <laughs> I'm, is I'm that, a, is I'm, that what the latest one is? Is Vin is Diesel that, not fused to that car? Is, is, is that not why he's always taking it everywhere he goes? Oh, no. I figured that's how they explained uh, the Paul Walker's death. Oh, he is the car now. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the easy way to do it, right? <laughs> I, like that I, Jack Black TV show that never went anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> Lord. With the talking motorcycle? I, I never saw or heard nor heard of that. Oh, I'll send you a link. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, all, right. all right. All right. It's time to talk about the bet results. Yeah, let's clear this up. This is from two weeks ago. We didn't have a bet last week. Uh, Joel, uh, I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, he wanted to go long GPS gap. They opened the week at 1302 and then decided to practice cliff diving. They closed last Friday at 1087. This Friday, I think, is looking even worse. Let's see. Yeah, it closed at 970. I guess the bleeding has stopped. Luckily, Joel had a tight stop, so we exited that at 1235. 
takes our total down to 474.27. And then Random picked one of the strongest stocks I think I've ever looked at <laughs> from since we've been doing this show. FRO opened at 1855 on Monday, closed the week at 1793. So even with that sell off uh, two weeks ago, it still managed to hold up. Oh. Uh, Random sits at 483.29. So if we lose this month, Joel is uh, graciously volunteered to step in and do the consequences for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess that means we'll have to make him make him extra nice so we don't lose Joel as a as a listener. He he was hoping that we'd stick him with watching the Princess Bride because that was the movie metaphor. I'd- uh, or the movie allegory, or oh yes, that I used, and he didn't. The terrible consequence yeah. of yeah, that's what to I said. Watch Princess Bride. I said no way, buddy. That's too easy. That's no, too good. We'll make him watch only the Peter Falk, uh, Fred Savage scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Got to watch Princess Bride, whatever the runtime is. He just has to keep watching those scenes until the entire runtime. Oh no, has that's. Oof, that's that's a that's a, that's a are consequence. You, are you suggesting we throw the rest of the month? <laughs> <laughs> ah, I didn't think about that, did you, Joel? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we might have a real bet pick coming up at the end. All right. All right. <laughs> Start to feel good about this bet. All of right, a right. <laughs> All right. Should we move on? Uh, yeah. Let's. Uh... Before we talk about the news, let's take a second to uh, thank our sponsors and friends at Manscaped, Trade Pro Academy, and Orderflow Labs. Ah, uh, thank you, friends. By now, everybody knows Manscaped is great down sm- down south. Uh, oh yeah. But we uh, we were actually just before we hit record talking about how how the Manscaped uh, beard trimmers that they sent are. They're really good. They're really nice. Yes. They're high quality. Uh, they use they use that high quality silicon like you'd get in a really expensive sex toy. Like yes, really yes, right. Just right. It's, it's just got that heft and that feel. Like uh, mm, this is going to do some damage. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> I can I can trim my beard and uh, I can I can get <laughs> no, no, no 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 we nope. can't no nope. no 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 nope. 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 <laughs> I can trim my beard and my beard. Will you look can trim good. your beard. Yes, you can. <laughs> I don't know how much of this is going to make it. Oh, uh, we do have an exclusive <laughs> offer of 20% off with free worldwide shipping using our promo code number two bulls at manscaped.com. It's always, that's the number two. And uh, you know what else also has the, uh, the heft and feel of a high quality sex toy? Uh, institutional quality trading education <laughs> over at tradeproacademy.com. Well, I'm really reaching on that segue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like reach around. That was a that was a Fast of the Furious level uh, car jump right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Crash and burn. <laughs> Over in our free Discord server, you'll find instructions to take advantage of our discount with them if you want to learn all of the technical analysis and institutional quality trade secrets. Not really mm. secrets, but the best place to sit down and get to know them is tradeproacademy.com. And Vico just updated the futures course. So I'm looking forward to diving into that here in a bit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Likewise, likewise. There's several several new courses he just updated. Yeah, yeah. And for everybody out there trading futures with us, definitely want to check out those custom tools and studies at orderflowlabs.com. And if you've listened to any of our our trading series with those guys, you'll know that they're they're legit. They know what they're yes. doing. Yes. All right. Should we should we get into some news? Let's do it. Let's let's get into some news. Dow drops deep on moving inflation, COVID frustration, war damnation. We're just bringing you the fucking news. You gotta recognize the game if you don't wanna lose. We're just skipping to bulls trading information. Yeah, we are. Rioters raiding, oh. insider trading, taxes mm. are raising, bills mm-hmm. on the hill. We got a crypto mill. No, they ain't growing weed. When the Fed speaks today, it's some shit we don't need. Sing it, man. Two bulls trading information. What? Two bulls trading information. I'm inclined to agree. Two bulls 
Trading information. That is accurate. Very accurate. What information? Um, I guess we have to start with uh, uh, bank news, right? Yeah, why not? All right. Banks well, lo- lo- I, I heard I heard a couple of banks did some things, maybe. Yeah, SVB has been uh, uh, delisted, or not delisted yet. It's been suspended. Like, there's no trading on it. Uh, the wife actually sent me something about like Robinhood wasn't going to honor all the options contracts that were outstanding on it because they couldn't. I guess they, I don't know. They didn't have the ability to. I I saw something about that. Yeah. Um, fuck. Which I, I should probably pull that story up. Actually, forgot all about it. Uh, okay, so when this is actually Signature stock that uh, this was on, it was Signature Bank. They stopped trading on Monday after regulators closed the bank on Sunday. So the traders who had bet against the shares using put options uh, that expired that Friday were in a difficult position, or expire on Friday. Uh, the brokers were faced with a logistical nightmare that could have resulted in correct bets expiring worthless. So Robinhood had been trying to say that they weren't going to do it, but it looks like enough pressure was put on them to uh, to force them to to uh, honor those positions. It's weird how they did it, though. So rather than like expiring them for cash, I think they're actually like, giving them a short position. And I don't know if you know, but it takes a lot of capital to short a stock. Uh, so I think there's a lot of people who might get kind of screwed out of that, too. Right, because they bought. They bought a put, which is an insurance contract for shares you have. But if you right. don't have the shares, yeah, somebody's yeah. got a short to give you the shares. And then there's no way to close them out either wow. because they're not trading right now. So it, I, so it's Robin Hood <laughs> selling naked puts to people that, it's, that messed yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looks like. Or people buying naked puts and not knowing how to handle what to do when the trading was suspended right right like trading suspended so i can't buy the shares to sell them to you yeah so it looks like they're allowing people to choose to exercise them but if they don't have enough shares to cover to exercise they're going to be short the shares and uh they may be stuck being short until uh until the trading is resumed and you, I don't, uh, that's wow. a lot of time it's a lot of time wow. to go by I don't know that I like that. <laughs> I I don't know that I feel bad for Robin Hood at all. Uh, no, man, fuck Robin Hood. I, I'm talking about people. Like, would you want to take a a short position on a bank that's been suspended? But it no, it would have to be Robin Hood that's taking the short position. No, they're get- giving they're, they're giving the shares to the people who exercise their options. Okay, so I buy a put that yeah. I don't have a hundred shares for. Yeah. If yeah. I'm going to exercise that contract, I buy 100 shares and then sell them at the put price. I buy them low, wherever it's no. at now, go a crater to. No, no, then- you don't even have to buy them. You just, if you execute it, it's just going to give you a short position. It's giving me a short position that's already in the money? I mean, well, they're not trading at zero, right? Because they're not trading. Like, if they never come back, then yeah, you'd be all right. You never have to you know, repay those shares. But what happens if they announce a something that saves the bank? Like there's going to be a lot of people holding short positions. They're going to have to close those out as soon as that trading resumes. So just like if, if the put was like the strike price was at 10 yeah, and the stocks at a dollar, they're like, Oh, okay. We're going to exercise your put. So now you're, you're short at 10. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's another good point. I don't know how far it did drop or, I'm just thinking of, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Fucking crazy, man. It's nuts. Yeah. It's not a position I want to be in. That's basically all I can really say, I guess. <laughs> uh, that's one of the things I saw with this. Um, SVB has announced it's seeking Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. SVB? What's that? Silicon Valley Bank. That's the one that that actually failed or that failed first. Golly, uh, Kyle, how could a bank fail? I know, right? <laughs> they have all the money. Oh, God, I know. Uh, I if know. only there were laws in place to require certain, have certain capital requirements. There are, or used to be. Oh, there, there did used to be a Dodd-Frank Act. It wasn't even that old, God damn it. 
yeah, there was a phrase mentioning regulatory failures in the joint statement released by the Fed, the Treasury Department, and the FDIC. And the government wanted wanted that in there, but Powell fought to get it taken out. Like, no, 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 we're not admitting to, to any wrongdoing here. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this wasn't love. regulatory failure. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I saw a thing, uh, I was listening to a thing where they were like, look, just because there's no lock on the liquor cabinet doesn't mean it doesn't give teenagers carte blanche to drink. <laughs> and my first thought was like, well, if you unlock the liquor cabinet before you go on vacation, you shouldn't expect those teenagers to not drink. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, ah. like, yes, you're right. Yeah. We should be able to just trust banks to what a to perfect stay solvent. fantasy world you live in. <laughs> but it's not like we passed those regulations because we felt like it. It was right after a fucking crash. If I drop $10,000 on the street, I should be able to go back and find it there because nobody would take something that isn't yes. theirs. Yes, you really should. You yeah. should, Kyle. You... <laughs> and, and damn it, if this was Vlad the Impaler's Wallachia... Oh, fuck yeah, then it would. <laughs> it would be there. There'd be a whole other host of problems <laughs> go with that, though. <laughs> uh, let's see. Last thing I wanted to touch on is just this uh, First Republic Bank deal that, that got announced here. The it's I don't know if you saw anything about this. It's actually no. kind of nuts. It's a different bank that's failing? Um, it's not going to fail now, apparently. Hoorah. Uh, First Republic. So 11 lending giants led by JP Morgan and Bank of America are providing unsecured deposits to the San Francisco bank. They're sending them $30 billion to help stabilize them. Oh, wow. Yeah. JP Morgan, Bank of America involved, uh, Citigroup, Wells Fargo. They all put in $5 billion apiece. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley kicked in $2.5 billion. U.S. Bank Corp, Truist, PNC, State Street. Uh, Bank of New York Mellon all each deposited a billion each. So they have to stay at First Republic for 120 days and earn interest at the same rate of current depositors, according to a person familiar with the agreement. Mm. But uh, this was um, stamped by Jerome Powell and uh, Janet Yellen. They both uh, very much liked the show of support between the large banks. But this this is more scary to me than anything else. <laughs> You got to ask yourself, what's the incentive for large banks to prop up another failing bank? Yeah, is it is it them trying to save their own? Yeah, that's prices? what I'm wondering. If they're trying to, they're trying to do something. They're trying to save the sector. I think there's bigger worries in this sector than people are uh, uh, thinking right now. Well, remember that was the first lesson I learned with Enron. Oh, was one bad apple can sink the sector. Oh, <laughs> that's a good point. You know, and that's kind of how it happened uh, when 2008, wasn't it? Wasn't there mm -hmm. one? You know, we had something fail Le and then Lehman Brothers. Yeah, it was like six months later when the crash actually happened. Yeah, it was the first domino. So I was actually talking to Jamie Lynn about buying some long term puts mm -hmm. on some banks. Yeah, I don't think that's a bad idea. Though, now that we're talking about it, I did. I don't have the link to the, any article, but I was reading uh uh some stock stuff on reddit that was saying that the bigger banks are having inflows of cash oh yes people people are like yes. regional banks fuck you pull their money out of the regional bank and go and put it in like chase and some of that was from what yellen was saying i think uh like people would ask her i don't know if this was just a clip i saw where i saw this but it was like okay so the big banks you know you're going to honor the deposits uh to make all the people who have their deposits in their hole are you going to do that for the regional banks she said no <laughs> oh, oh! So there's different set of rules for big banks versus regional banks. Yeah, like that's the takeaway from that. Like you hear somebody say something like that. Yeah, you're going to pull your money out of the regional banks and stick it in the bigger one. Yeah, but yeah. Bank of America saw over 15 billion. I think are still waiting to see from the other bigger ones what sort of sort of inflows they've seen. But it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's them just feeling guilty. They're just returning the extra deposits they got. <laughs> Here you go. We're like sorry. You can have, here's here's a slice of the fifteen billion I just raked in. <laughs> uh, didn't Credit Suisse also get a get a big loan to shore up their liquidity? Uh, from the Swiss bank, I think, or the from Swiss the, the Swiss bank. government. Yeah, the government. Yeah, bank. yeah, yes. 
<laughs> yeah, saw that too. Um, fuck Credit Suisse. Yeah. Oh wait, 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 wait. Actually, I got uh, I got uh, Coil Spotting was kind enough to tell us how to properly pronounce that. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Suisse. 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 Sorry, Coil. I'm looking for your message. Su 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 Ah, credit. Credit. Suisse. Credit. Credit Suisse. That is the proper credit pronunciation. Suisse. <laughs> Thanks, Coil Spotting. <laughs> it, it, if you pretend you're French and you have a cigarette in your hand, it's Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse. Okay. Uh, uh, well, you know, uh, on that topic, though, one of uh, it was less of a story and more of a direct link to the St. Louis Fed Economic Research Economic Data page. Mm-hmm. Uh, that gives you the graph of the total assets owned by the Fed. Oh yeah, yeah. You can see the COVID jump from four trillion to seven trillion. Oh, and there's then, a nice jump in the last two weeks too. And that's why I bring it up because we peaked at almost nine trillion back uh, in April of 2022, and we've kind of been had this down downward thing. We got. All the way down to eight point three trillion, <laughs> and in the la- that was March eighth, and then March fifteenth data comes in, and we're spiking up to eight point six four trillion. So quantitative easing is done. Yeah, we're going up again, and it's not like a <laughs> like a little bit. Like it's a <laughs> that's a decent jump. If you zoom in on the graph, yeah. Yeah, it looks small when you're talking about trillions, but uh, that's that's 300 billion, isn't it? Yes, yes. And so they're adding to their balance sheet again. That's a bad sign. Yeah. That's a bad sign to me. And I didn't see any news articles about this. Somebody posted this graph on Reddit asking, like, has anybody seen any news about this? I was looking for that. I couldn't find anything either because I thought I had heard somebody talking about it too. Ah, breaking news, folks. You heard it here on the in the, in the China shop first. <laughs> All right. You got anything else for us? Um, just that uh, Bank of America is showing uh, cash, having a huge inflow, which is a nice way of saying people are pulling their money out of the markets to the tune of $112 billion this week. No, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> following Silicon Valley. <laughs> Uh, equities had a $26 million outflow, uh, $2.3 billion were pulled out of bonds. Uh, gold is up 600 million though. So So treasuries are dropping too. It's, it's getting, it's getting crazy. Um, but they said there has been no equity capitulation. So people aren't, they're still holding their stocks. Is that what that means? Well, at the very least, uh, Retail's still buying the dip. <laughs> well, I think uh, I think the with FOMC coming out next week, this should be really, really interesting to see how this new data gets interpreted. Uh, I think right now we're predicting a quarter rate or quarter bit hike, twenty five bit hike. Uh, I'd seen it as you know split fifty fifty at the the peak um, between no hike and fifty uh, twenty five bit. Hmm. But uh, yeah, the 50 bit looks to be off the table according to the funds rate futures. Well, according to Dan and his gut, I will say it like I said it before. Every time Powell speaks this year, it's bad news. <laughs> oh, boy. It's, it's so far, I've been right. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sooner or later, he'll turn back into a dove, right? <laughs> I mean, he's due, man. We're due. We're due. I know. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Just keep pulling this slot. You'll get there. It's funny. He's been saying hawkish things, but the market's still been reacting positively to a lot of it lately. It's so weird. <laughs> All right. Should we, uh, should we move on and uh, let's, maybe let's do, do some it. advertising? Let's do it. Celebrate some capitalism. Woo-woo. Yay. Hi guys, Future Kyle here, sliding on into the mid-rolls to give you all a sneak peek of next week's episode. Let's roll into one of the problems that traders have that they don't know they have. I have never 
had a trader come to me and say, Rich, one of my biggest concerns is that I'm not going to be able to manage success, that my identity, my beliefs, and my behaviors just, they're, 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 they've strugg- I've struggled for so long that I'm concerned that, that I'm going to sabotage my trading so I don't have to deal with a shift. Mm-hmm. Nobody's ever come to me and said that. That was a sneak peek of episode six of Trade Runners featuring Rich Friesen coming next week. If you haven't heard by now, Manscaped now sells beard products. That's right. Once again, revolutionizing men's grooming with a brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. From a beard trim to a fresh shave, the technology behind the Beard Hedger Pro Kit allows you to shape your signature beard look. Now you can finally use Manscaped products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com and using code 2BULLS for 20% off and free shipping. God damn, I was going to make that joke. <laughs> Our friends over at Manscaped were kind enough to send me the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, and I gotta say, I was impressed with the quality and performance of the products. My thick, coarse beard hair has been giving me trouble with trimmers in the past, but the Beard Hedger was able to cut through the thicket without any tugging or discomfort at all. And because the trimmer has one rotary wheel with 20 length settings with only one guard, I don't have to worry about losing or breaking attachments anymore. So I've tamed my mane, and now you can too. No one likes a weird beard, so say goodbye to your stubble trouble with Manscaped's Pro Beard Kit. It all starts with that beard hedger that I mentioned. Things a juggernaut of fixing faces. Not only does it have that trimmer with the rotary wheel that gives you the 20 hair cutting lengths of just the one guard, it's also waterproof so you can shave in the shower and avoid all the hair in the sink. The titanium coated T-blade is tough on hair but smooth on your face, leading to a single stroke efficiency that brings satisfaction one stroke at a time. Phrasing. The Pro Kit doesn't end there though, they also created four dermatologist tested formulations for your post trim care. First is the beard shampoo and conditioner. Gotta remember that all your hair is different. Beard hair, as I mentioned, is more coarse and easier to damage than the hair on your head. If you have hair on your head. That's why the kit has made shampoo and conditioner specially designed to moisturize, reduce ingrown hairs, replace natural oils, and promote beard health. Next, the kit has Manscaped's beard oil, an essential piece for your main facial accessory. No one wants a guy whose beard is brittle and dry. The oil relieves dryness both on the beard and the skin beneath while adding a little shimmer and shine, which makes you look extra fine. Cap off the kit with the Beard Balm, a pomade that shapes, styles, moisturizes, and tames for a sculpted look to attract any fellows or dames. The Pro Beard Kit also comes with three free gifts, a beard brush, comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress. So get 20% off and free shipping with code 2BULLS at manscaped.com. Of course, that's the number two. It's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using code 2BULLS. Manscaped Beard Hedger, one stroke, one guard, 20 lengths. Take as little as three minutes to see if you could save on motorcycle insurance with Progressive. Come on, you've spent more time than that thinking about helmets with faces on them. I should get a new helmet. Ooh, maybe I'll get one of those ones that looks like a face with painted teeth and eyebrows, you know? Oh, that always looks so cool. People are like, whoa, is that a person with two faces? Oh, no, it's a helmet and one face. Get a quote in as little as three minutes at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. You will fail. So what? Everybody does. It's time to redefine success. Meet body. Fun workouts and a week off. Healthy eating and indulgence. Liking yourself no matter what. Yeah, you will fail. We all will. But we're not going to let that be the end. You see that? We're already making progress. So let's keep going. We are Body. Start your free trial at body.com. That's B O D I.com. And we can do a song. Stock time! Now it's talk about stock time. Looking for setups and still not advice. Big moves, fresh news, and earnings. All that we're saying is still not advice. Stop, stop. Please don't sue us. Uh, the, let's see. The one I got here. That, well, fuck. We should probably lead off with Bank of America. Bank of America is trying to buy Signature Bank on Monday. Ooh. I just saw that Let's come through right breaking in. news uh, two hours ago. Bell Aikman on a tweet on Friday said B of A is going to acquire Signature Bank on Monday without citing the source of information. Oh, okay, so there's no... It's not confirmed yet, but... Uh, uh, yeah. Look. 
it is the exact kind of behavior you would expect when smaller banks are struggling right. to start to fail. Yeah, the rest of that tweet went that um, unless and until we can protect uninsured deposits, the cost of capital is going to rise for smaller banks, pushing them to merge or be acquired by the SIBs. I don't think this is good for America. Mm-mm. I mean, good for Bank of America, probably. <laughs> good. Yeah, but they- <laughs> That's just a name. They're not actually a nationalized bank. <laughs> no, no, they're not. <laughs> All right. What do you got for us today? Uh, the CEO of OpenAI has come out and said, we're a little bit scared when it comes <laughs> to the risks of artificial intelligence. Uh... So OpenAI, the people that put together ChatGPT, or as I like to call it, uh, a college paper writing bot. The worst newspaper editor in the oh, world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most people get out of prison in great shape with a good education. <laughs> oh, just kind of glossed over all the other downfalls. And, and maybe a couple of tattoos and some trauma. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of trauma. <laughs> Mostly trauma. Um, yeah, he's out there uh, saying regulators and society need to be involved with the tech to, to with AI to guard against the negative consequences for humanity. Um, it's always strange to me when the CEO of a company says, can you come in and regulate me, please? Uh, is that what he's saying? Or is he saying regulate our competitors? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, no, uh, we're doing it right. We need regulations for the other guys. To to directly quote him, I'm particularly worried that these models could be used for large-scale disinformation. Now that they're getting better at writing computer code, they could be used for offensive cyber attacks. Oh, Jesus. So he's saying that their AI is now writing code. So take that, computer programmers. Oh, we've been, uh, the Discord's been playing around with using it to write studies. It's fucking incredible. (laughs) It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, there's still you still got to have some knowledge in order to like figure out the errors, and sometimes it'll get stuck in loops where it'll be like, oh, this like you just basically say like, hey, I got this error from the code you gave me, and like, oh, that's because of this, this, and this. Here, let me try rewriting that for you using this version instead, Hmm. and it spits that out, and then you punch it in. If you got another error, you say, I got this error, and it says, oh, that's because. Hmm. So sometimes you get in a loop where it bounces back and forth, but it's pretty fucking impressive. Yeah. Well, he, he claims it's the greatest technology humanity has yet developed. Uh, they've released their latest version less than four months after the original version was released. It's become the fastest growing consumer application in history. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I got 90% on the bar exams. Yeah. Did you see that? And a near perfect sco- score on the high school SAT math test, which that's better than us, us, Kyle. I don't know. We did pretty good. We did good, but we didn't do perfect. No, we did not. No. No, it isn't <laughs> fucking or near perfect. Uh, fucking chat GPT. Yeah, I remember somebody named uh, Noble uh, developed a technology that changed the world back in the 1800s sometime around there, mm, wasn't it? Talking dynamite? Yeah, that didn't fare too well either. Kaboom. I uh, was fine. Hopefully, uh, Mr. Altman here doesn't have the need to create some sort of world peace prize. In the next uh, 10 years. <laughs> He's going to feel so bad about what he created that he creates a peace prize. So his name isn't related to death and destruction. Yeah, it's called the Best Human Awards. <laughs> <laughs> Super Best Definitely Real Human Award. Yes. <laughs> the person who does the best at CAPTCHA. <laughs> Oh, oh God! Yeah, no word on that and how how Chat GPT fares with a captcha. No, no. <laughs> All right, you got anything else? Uh, just a little puff piece. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, we all oh. know the wise cracking actor who played Deadpool. Yeah, uh, he yep. got, he's got stakes in Aviator Gin and Mint Mobile. Oh. Well, he's looking at a three hundred million dollar payout because they're selling Mint Mobile to T Mobile. That didn't take long. No, no. I've been getting bombarded by his YouTube commercials too. Oh yeah, that's. I think he learned it from William Shatner because William Shatner famously they were like, "Hey, come be our spokesman for Priceline." He was like, "All right, but pay me in stock, not money." Ah, nice. And it ended up 
making Shatner billions. Right, right. <laughs> like, woo. Uh, so, so Ryan Reynolds is is like, oh, well, shit. I'll buy a stake in a company, and then I'll be the spokesman. Right. And it's yeah. So Aviation Gin and Mint Mobile. Um, I'm pretty sure he sold Aviation Gin too, didn't he? How's his uh, soccer team doing? Oh, you're just going to have to watch this TV show to find out. Yeah, I'm still catching up on season two, I think. It's it's pretty engaging, though. It is. God damn it. <laughs> I didn't want it to be good. I was like, wait a minute. This is a documentary, but it's still entertaining. Fuck. <laughs> well, it's. I think it's entertaining, especially because Americans who don't know how they do the soccer leagues. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, football leagues to all the listeners across the pond. Uh do- do we have uh, Europe translations? I don't know. I don't know. Where's I'll, Where's Anthony? I'll, I'll have to look into that. <laughs> oh yeah, here. Let me let me translate it for Anthony for all those cunts across the pond <laughs> <laughs> playing soccer. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, right, bastard soccer playing cunts. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, he's gonna get about three hundred and forty million dollars. I don't. It doesn't say he that his stake is twenty five percent. It doesn't say how much. Mm-hmm. He put down to buy that much in the beginning, but it's, I'm going to assume it's less than 300 million. Yes. <laughs> yeah. In fact, probably significantly less. Yeah. Uh, I mean, th- th- and at this point, that's easier than than taking a movie job, right? Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably that's, thinking, why doesn't everybody do this? 2019, that's like uh, doing two $50 million pictures a year for the last three years. Right, right. Oh, man. Good for him. Yeah, so T-Mobile, uh, the, the underlying story is, is T-Mobile is expanding their brand. Are they going to honor the $15 contracts that they do, or no contracts, or whatever it is? $15 a line? I I don't know. <laughs> or is that why they want to buy them so badly? <laughs> So, yeah, T-Mobile growing as a conglomerate. It's it's weird because oftentimes those those smaller cell phone companies like Mint will Mm -hmm. be using T-Mobile towers or Verizon towers. It's always funny to me. Uh, But if uh, uh, long story short, zooming out here on the five year chart for T-Mobile or even the max chart, uh, their stock is looking pretty good. It's looking pretty yeah. healthy and strong. It's clanging up, uh, trying to break through 150 and stay up, stay there. Hmm. Have to pin that one for maybe a bet pick. Yeah. All right. Uh, should we move on and do some crypto? Let's do it. I got some crypto in my wallet. Hanging out on my Ethereum blockchain. Yeah, I got. Crypto in my wallet. Some Doge, Sushi, Polka Dot, NFT. Decentralized, anonymized, fabulous cryptocurrency. All right, Dan, I've only got one, but it's a doozy. Okay, all right, let's hear it. Our favorite uh, favorite stock picker, uh, Jim Cramer, has decided to branch out, and he's now getting into the crypto calls. Uh, he's predicting Bitcoin's imminent demise. Demise? Imminent demise. Imminent demise. Shit. Yeah, he, in the last, uh, let's see, the, okay, there was a 12% increase in the, uh, I guess, Bitcoin in the 12, 24 hours before he made this statement. Uh, he's basically saying that there's no clear use case for Bitcoin. Uh, he called it a strange animal and suggested it is being manipulated up. Oh, oh, not only is it going away, but that Kramer is suggesting it's being manipulated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jim manipulation Kramer. Right. <laughs> that's weird. But I, I, I think I saw something that uh, like that's that's been proven in the past or. Like there's a lot of evidence that has been the case in the past. Uh, I think we talked about it a few months ago. Yeah. Well, I don't have any any qualms against uh, someone saying it's manipulated. I just have qualms with somebody who's 
<laughs> like admitted to manipulating stocks and equities yeah. in the past on camera. It's <laughs> throwing shade. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, damn uh, it. The, let's see. The other thing that was in there is uh, when he asked if the stress on the banking system and the Federal Reserve strengthened Bitcoin's investment case, he replied, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, fuck, you know, that's crazy. Uh, uh, I did see an article uh, that came out March 17th today. Oh, yeah. Uh, that Kathy Woods. And ARK Invest has been raising money for a private cryptocurrency fund. Oh, she's branching out too. Yeah. So while he's saying that, Kathy Woods is giving Bitcoin the price target of half a million to a million dollars over the coming years. That sounds like Kathy. So <laughs> who, at the very least, we could say Kramer is ling- saying Kathy Woods is fucking in cahoots with the people manipulating the price. Oh, I, I don't know if you can say that. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a leap I'm willing to take. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, it re, you got to read with your gut, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. You're reading with your brain. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. There's no direct correlation. But I do find it interesting that we have these two personalities who uh, before, like, you know, before Kramer became a TV guy, he was doing what Kathy Wood's doing. Right. Right. Running. He was, he was a kingmaker in the hedge fund world. Yeah. Yeah. Or in the, yeah, in the fund world, hedge fund world, all that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. This is a tough, it puts you in a tough spot, right? Because yeah. going inverse Kathy Woods has been a thing. You know, you got the short arc. Uh, mm-hmm. They finally released the short Jim Kramer which is S Jim uh, index fund. <laughs> like there was another one. It was a separate one that looks at it only for like the first few days after he mentions it, which I think that's what we looked at uh, years ago. And we're trying to see how accurate he was. Yeah. Like when you, like in the first week after he recommends something, like they tend to tank, <laughs> mm-hmm. but because he's recommending them for long-term holds, quote unquote, you wait five years in a booming economy and all of his picks look magical, but really you could have picked anything. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like George would say, you could just pick your initials. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We, we do all right. My, my initials are Delta airlines. <laughs> Mine are kilowatt hours. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's true. Yeah. Oh, invest no. in energy, Kyle, invest in energy. <laughs> I tried to do that when uh, Joel was filling in for you. That would have, not worked out very well either. <laughs> <laughs> Should have just shorted banks. Like, I know, right? I don't know what you were thinking. Uh, uh, that was before that. Mm. That was before. Oh, you can't tell the future now? No. No, I can tell the past. Ooh, hey. <laughs> Captain Hindsight. All right. <laughs> All right. What, uh, what's next on the agenda here? Oh, uh, I think I'm just going to... Oh, oh. oh, damn it. Try to let you shoot me. I know. I was getting my gun out. I <laughs> keep it in the gun safe, all locked up. <laughs> I keep mine loaded on my waistband, pointed right at my dick. <laughs> That's the safest way to carry. Oh, God. I'm just remembering a Thanksgiving where my brother is sitting there and like I see his gun sticking out. Of his brother, his pants pointed at his dick, and I'm like, "We're fucking eating turkey." <laughs> what are you worried about? What are you worried about, man? <laughs> All, All right. right. Anyway, do you have any uh, good, bad, <laughs> ugly to discuss this week? Yeah, I, I've been. I don't know if this is good, bad, and the ugly. Um, I'm in the process of, of of leaving my nine to five. I'm I'm making good money there, but the the place is a total clown show. I yeah. can't save it. Um. And I'm kicking myself because as soon as I heard the the SVB bank news, mm-hmm. my first inclination was to 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 go short some banks. Yeah, and I didn't. I let myself get distracted with other things, and I'm like, damn, damn it, Dan, this is like the first thing you learned in stock school with your energy stock was 
When the first one goes down, it's going to pull everything around with it, whether the other things are doing bad or not. Right. And I'm, I'm kicking myself. I guess there's still time, but I feel like oh, the yeah. boat already left. I mean, keep an eye on the sector. I think uh, if we start getting news on the inflows from some of these other banks, um, that could push them up uh, counter trend. Yeah. So That's it could true. be something to watch for. Also, it actually could be good for the bigger banks, really, too, because they may be able to start buying some distressed assets and, uh, you know, reducing the consumer choice mm. is one way to put it. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, all right. Do you have any bads or uglies? No. I'm no. assuming the quitting a job is the good. That is the good. Yeah. Put it in, put it in notice. It's just not working. And it's like Jamie Lynn said, like, you're not putting nearly the energy into your shows that you're supposed to be yeah and they fucking stuck you on graves to die too it seemed like yeah like you were supposed to be management like management doesn't work grave shifts unless they like unless you're covering well i am managing a very important chunk of hours into the mm-hmm. evening i'm doing 4 p.m to 1 a.m yeah uh and i'm the only manager there right Oh, that's even better. Put the new guy out there alone. That's one way to yeah, <laughs> teach you yeah. the ropes. <laughs> yeah, they're Our, just they were just desperate. Yeah. Well, and also your situation changed too, right? Because you guys managed to sell the other house you're sitting on. Yep. So Yep. And me, you know, honestly getting a job was to cover for that now that it's covered. Like I should have I should have put in my notice then, but I was like, I can I can save this. <laughs> Let, uh, let me turn this around with my brain. And then Jamie Lynn's like, why are you putting all this energy into them? Like, put it into your shit. I'm like, oh, damn it. You're right. Okay. Okay. You're right. Smart. Yeah, she's, she's a smart girl. She is. Definitely. <laughs> all right. My my good and bad are kind of related. Mm-hmm. Uh, my focus this past week was on my execution. Uh, the week before, I actually printed out a chart to show just how much missed trades cost me. It was 103 points last week. Ooh. Uh, or the previous week, yeah. Uh, this week it was only fifty, so I managed to improve on that and cut that down in half. Uh, the bad is that I still, you know, missed fifty points worth of trades. Yeah, yeah. So it's trending in the right direction. That's good, but uh, still battling some emotions. And it's such a weird thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first iteration of the U Profit trading this plan, uh, the one that didn't work and blew up Uh, that one was easy to focus on the execution because it was never profitable at any point i don't think (laughs) i think it started off uh bad and just continued bad (laughs) okay Uh, this version started out well and then now i've got suddenly the emotions to deal with of not wanting to give any of that back like suddenly now there's like it's closer to the goal and now like any steps backwards, like feels like, like what Rich used to say, like a, a referendum against me. Mm. And that's something that I've got to figure out. Yeah. Um, so I guess that could be my ugly, but uh, I think the worst ugly was a trade that happened today. I had a trade that I was short. Um, it went to about five ticks away from my take profit and then reversed and came all the way back to wipe me out for a full stop. Mm. And that had oh. happened. The, what makes this ugly is this had happened uh, last week, too. Oh. And I had been playing around with what I want to do to account for that. Like, okay, we get, uh, you know, close to take, you know, within this certain range of hitting my take profit, then I'm going to move my stop to, you know, 1R, or 1.5R or something, just so it doesn't do that again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I never actually finalized it. And because of that, because I didn't know what to do, uh, it just bit me in the butt today. I ended up just basically getting in an inner monologue argument with myself over, okay, if it breaks this point, then that's when I should get out and then it break that and then come back. Oh, it's going my way again. It's still holding structure. So, okay, we'll, we'll go ahead and sit in it for a little longer. And yeah, mm-hmm. not happy with the way I ended the week. You just kind of get caught in that loop, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah. And then just watched it basically go from what would have been about a 60 point trade to uh, minus 30. Damn. Damn. Yep. Yep. That's painful. But but the positive is that there's a lesson to take away from that. And guess what? I will have uh, Monday. 
a, a moving stop loss? <laughs> a plan on how to move my stops, yes. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Yeah, yeah, well, especially when it gets so close to the take profit, you got to at least be like, well, let's make it so it won't be a loss. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because that, it was the mindset that that put me in that mm -hmm. I really, really the downfall. Like it would have been so much better to take less profit and still be profitable and still have it go and hit my take profit, you know, rather than turning a day that would have been green into a red day. And when it gets so close, I don't know how to defeat that emotional experience of you're never going to be able to look at it and not feel like I lost that money. Right, right. Yeah. Like it, it was yeah. all the way up there and it was so close to, to getting filled and then it turned around. Like if I just said, oh, shit, and, and market it out. Like, nope. uh, I would have got out of that money. I lost that money. Not like, oh, I'm just following the plan, just following the strategy. And I think some of it kind of ties into uh, like dreams, right? right? Like once you've closed the trade out, it's like a lottery ticket you've scratched. Until you scratch it, you can still dream about yeah. the win. But once you, you know, actually, you know, scratch the numbers off or once you let the actual trade resolve, then, then you can't dream about it anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, hmm. something something to reflect on for sure. All right, should we uh, make a bet? I need it, wanna beat it, gonna win it if I take it from you. I'm filling my positions, quit your bitch and random's gonna lose. Got a chart full of levels and a stop that's not too tight. It's bet, pick a time in the shop, so pick them right. Ooh. Okay, uh, you got any ideas for, uh, for a bet pick? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got a big one. Is it shorting any bank stock? It's not any bank. Oh, which but bank? But it is shorting a financial asset management company. Which, which one? Owl, O W L. O W L. Blue Owl Capital. Ooh, what happened there? That was a big sell off day. Yeah, I don't think it's done. I think it's just paused at this resistance where it's consolidated before. Yeah. I think this, this sucker, uh, yeah, it's, it saw a high of 14 and it's come down. And it clanged on 10. It's at 10.23 right now. But I think I think it's going to get down to 8. I mean, if you look, XLF looks the same. I think a few other banks I looked at kind of look the same, similar. Bank of America, uh, Wells Fargo Corporation looked like it was... Actually, Wells Fargo looked maybe a little bit worse because it actually broke out of the consolidation it was in. Yeah, this... this uh, I was doing a Finviz screener of Wedge Up Strong. Mm -hmm. And Owl had a strong wedge up, but it... <laughs> Thanks to it this news, it broke out it. that wedge. <laughs> All right. So, so you want to go owl, huh? I, I like shorting owl, but you okay. know, if you've got something that you want to pick. I was going to take a look at Salesforce because it rejected off of 193, but I'm afraid that our stop would end up being a little wider than we probably want. I think owl looks like you can probably put a better stop in there. Yeah. Because, yeah, if I'm taking Salesforce, I want my stop like above the that peak uh, from the earnings gap and that, you know, that puts us $10 away from where the shares are at right now. Yeah. So yeah, I say we stick with owl. So yeah, you the, like that one? What's the parameters? Um, well, if they were to, you know, looking to go short. Yep. I don't want to get an over. Uh, it's such a high percentage, but looking at it, I'm like 11, $11 30 cents. Well, this is Joel's money, I guess, so we shouldn't really worry too much about it. Okay, yeah, we'll put the stop at eleven thirty-three <laughs> above the two hundred day moving yeah. average. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just right above it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> stop us above. I'm just gonna put two hundred day moving average. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Stop at this, and that's the simple moving average I'm using. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at the FinViz. It's the simple moving average. That's what I got too. It's at eleven twenty one. All right, you want to take profit anywhere? Maybe like eight fifty. 
Oh, uh, take take profit at nine fifty. Half take half at nine fifty, and okay. the rest at eight fifty if it gets there. Half at eight fifty. Okay, you ready for a random? Yeah, what do we got? Uh, uh, randoms decided to go consumer durables. Uh, Ash A S H. Ashland Incorporated. Interesting choice. I mean, look like he's really throwing us a, a softball here. Mm. <laughs> this looks just like your bank stock, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. All right. But they're going long. Can we short this one? If you want to. <laughs> specialty t- chemicals. <laughs> oh, I this like, is food I like specialty shorting, candy. I like shorting financials right now better yeah but yeah. it might be a little more long-term play because as we saw the fed is increasing their assets so maybe <laughs> the fed is buying banks to shore them up uh, i don't think we can go against Rand. i don't think that's in the spirit <laughs> all right owl, <laughs> owl versus ash yes all right sounds like a plan final the final countdown the final <laughs> All right, Dan, wrap us up. Oh, wait, me? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, what do, what do I say? What do I say? I, oh, um, I don't know, but make it quick. All right, folks, that brings us to the end of the episode. Thanks for coming by, but we're closing up shop. We'll be back out with you soon. Like, share, subscribe, rate, love, war, dogs, cats, making love in the rain. Happy trades. Finger that five-star rating like a crazy ex used to do it, and take care. Oh! <laughs> 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 Finger that five-star rating like your crazy ex used to do. Yep. Yep. (laughs) Oh, we'll be back at you soon, folks. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, We love you so much. Until next time, happy trades. Bye. Two Bulls in a China Shop is an entertainment program, and all thoughts and opinions expressed in the show belong to the hosts and not of any company. They are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual or on any specific security or investment product. It is only intended to provide entertainment about stocks in the financial industry of trading. If you make trades based on what you hear in this show, you assume all risks for those trades. Leave that for my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, honey. <laughs> and now a special motorcycle weather report from Progressive. And today expect mostly sunny conditions with a high on life that can only come from cruising down the road on two wheels. Kids will wave, dogs will bark, and cyclists in padded shorts will instantly regret their chosen mode of transportation. Whereas you, on the other hand, will look super duper cool. Back to you in the studio. This has been a special motorcycle weather report from Progressive, where every day is a beautiful day to ride with coverage from America's number one motorcycle insurer. Get a quote today and see what you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. You will fail. So what? Everybody does. It's time to redefine success. Meet body, fun workouts, and a week off. Healthy eating and indulgence. Liking yourself no matter what. Yeah, you will fail. We all will. But we're not going to let that be the end. You see that? We're already making progress. So let's keep going. We are body. Start your free trial at body.com. That's B-O-D-I dot com.